Hi folks, and welcome to the isometric unit of our course. And uh, not gonna lie, this is one of my favorite sets of drawing. I like drawing pictorial things. So this along with actual 3D construction, uh, I certainly enjoy. You've watched the uh, video on uh, the introductory degree video on isometric, so I'm not gonna go over any of those uh, sort of basic concepts. We're gonna get right into drawing an object. Inside of our AutoCAD web app, I just want you to make sure that you've got polar tracking turned on because we are really going to need those 30 degree lines. I always keep it at 15 anyway, just so I can draw both 45 and 30s uh, easily. But uh, if you've got it set to 15, you'll also have it set to 30s. For the isometric plane, you're going to see lots of angles at 30 degrees, and you're probably going to see some at 60. Anything in a multiple of uh, uh, anything in a multiple of 30. So. Going to see 90s and you're going to see two tens and you're going to see two 70s straight up yeah two 70s straight down i guess yeah uh, you're going to see 150 a lot and 210 okay everything's in uh, multiples of 30 degrees so make sure you've got that polar set on and you're not going to have to draw too many construction lines especially for rectilinear objects things with 90 degree angles and and uh, little ramped portions and, and things like that once we get to circles and fillets and isometric form, we have a bit more of a complex process to follow, but a lot of these earlier drawings are, are really quite straightforward, as long as you understand the concept. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to work with the carrier block today, just as our original uh, sort of intro video to this, and the only thing that's a bit, um, you know, complex about this object is that it's got a ramped face, and we don't know the angle of this ramp, so we're going to have to use the other dimensions as we're building our isometric, and uh, hopefully end up with the correct shape at the end. Uh, most of our isometrics, in fact, all of them, are going to be based on orthographic views or two, you know, two view or three view orthographic views, sometimes sectional views, because we need to have all of the dimensions of an object to draw it in isometric form. Isometric just means of equal measure, and that doesn't mean all the dimensions are equal. It just means that anything that is a true dimension of the object is going to be represented in our isometric. Unlike for uh, the obliques, our cabinet versions, we took half lengths for our depth lines. We're not going to do that with isometrics. Everything's drawn exactly the length and dimension that you're going to see on the orthographic version. When I am starting an orthograph or sorry, an isometric drawing, I always like to draw myself a bounding box. It helps kind of keep me centered and introduce me to the isometric plane. And then I build the object inside of that box. So I do that with construction lines. But aside from that, there aren't a whole lot of construction lines involved in isometrics. So for my bounding box, it's going to be a, rect a rectangular prism, and uh, I just want to get the total dimensions of the object with regard to length and height and depth so that I can draw that box. You can always start with what I would consider like a front corner. So the front corner would be something like this corner right here, and then we'll base everything on that. So I know it's uh, 60 by 130 by 54, so that's enough to give me my bounding box. 130 on the length, so I'm just going to go to con line 2 and I'm going to draw a line that is 130 in length. Typically the long axis is going to go up this way, so I need to go 90 degrees, okay, and then, well actually it's probably easier to think about it as a straight line, 180 degrees. If I'm going toward the left, then 180 minus 30 is 150, so that's why you're going to see that 150 measurement a lot. So you can see my polar snap set to 150 and Hopefully I didn't forget, but I think it was 130 the line was. And then as far as height, it's 54. All vertical measurements are always vertical in your isometrics too. Okay? The length measurements and the depth measurements are going to go at 30 degree angles. But height or vertical lines is always a vertical line. So we'll keep that a vertical line, 54. And then for the depth marker, so there's 0 degrees. I'm going to go up 30 degrees. And I believe my, my depth overall width of the object down here, oops, sorry, here is 60. So that's going to be 60 degrees at a 30 degree angle, or sorry, 60 in length at a 30 degree angle. Now you've got the basics. So all the length lines are still the length lines, right? So I'm at the top of the object right now. So this is the bottom length, and then I go up to the top of the oil object, and I'm still at the front, and now I'm going to the back of the object, but I'm still at the top, the top rear portion. And you could just, you could fill it in from there. It's pretty simple stuff. Just make sure you're going at a 30 degree angle. And then this would be a length line, so that would be 130. 
okay, and then I can go this way if I want. There's more than one way to draw it. Doesn't really matter which order you go in as long as all your measurements are right. So that's 50, uh, 60, and this should be 54 when I go down. It is, and then this is going to be another 60, and then it should be able to go straight up 54 again. And I think you can see the box, the bounding box kind of coming into shape there. So inside of this box, my object will fit perfectly. And it, you know, it's got an angle portion, so we'll take care of that. But I always like to make this bounding box just so when I'm creating my object, if I make any mistakes in what length or, or uh, I type in or something like that, it'll go outside the box and I'll know right away that I made an error. Now we just get from uh, straight to drawing construction lines. Uh, like with any other drawing, you just draw object lines that you know exist from your drawing. So I know that this bottom portion here is 130, and I know that it goes all the way up to the top, which is another 54. So I can just draw those object lines with my zero layer right away. Grab my line tool, go from there to there. That's an unbroken line from my orthographics. And go straight up, that's an unbroken line. Now we've got to do a little thinking because we've got angles and shapes and, and whatnot. Okay, so I know at the top of the object on the, on the lengthwise piece, I can go to 60 degrees. So that's great, I can draw that line right here. So I'm just gonna draw that, or sorry, 60 in length, 60 degrees. So I can draw that right there. And I also know there's a ramped portion that goes down here somewhere. And I do have enough information to find that because I know it starts, I already have this point, that's where I ended up, and I know it goes up 20 from the front. So that's another object line that I can draw quite easily. You can see how much easier this is to draw how, you know, you can just rely strictly on your angles and your lengths and your lines. And that's my next 60. And the object kind of just kind of comes into uh, being one piece at a time. Now I can connect those two. And if I turn off my yellow cons, you can see what I've got so far. So that piece right there is going to represent this side of the object. As we move from the front of the object to the back, we notice there's some other features here. But we have measurements for all of them, so it's not going to be a big deal. Um, where we go from here is sort of up to you. Let's just start up at this back corner. I know that for this little cutout piece here, it needs to go across 12 and then down 11 and cross again. So I can just draw that. Turn my bounded box back on. So I said it goes across 12. So that's 12. Remember, every, every measurement is, uh, every vertical measurement is still vertical. So if it goes down 11 to get to that gap, then this has to go straight down as well. We could trim lines later. Sometimes the lines get hidden by other features, and we can always trim those later. We just want to make sure that everything's set up properly at first. So that goes down 11, and then it goes across. It goes across this section here, and we know that gap is 36. So again, we've got enough information. Just make sure I'm at the right angle. Go for 36. I know it goes up 11 again, which should take me right back up to my line. And we know it goes to the end of the object, which is right there. Now, several of these lines are going to be hidden after we complete our uh, the top view. It'll just be you know hidden from sight because the top will get away in, in the way of it. But these are still lines that I like to draw just to make sure that I've got everything in its in its proper place. I have this point right here at the top of the object, and I know that this goes sixty for where it hits the you know the ramped portion or the angled portion. So this is going to show me basically that some of these lines need to be trimmed or will be hidden in the, in the uh, long view. So if I start here and I go down 60 like I know I should, okay, you'll notice that anything inside of that is going to be hidden. Okay, So you can trim those right away. You can save it to later. I usually like to trim as I go just to avoid clutter in, in future portions. So the reason I drew those lines, even though I had to delete them, is I needed to know where this portion is because that portion is visible. Back to my line tool, and I can do the same thing on the other side. Okay, I know this goes down at 60, the exact same as it did before. And I know that this, from this corner, also goes down 60, which is where it hits the ramp. There is no need to redraw the ramped portion because I can just copy this line and the ramp portion. So I'm holding down Shift, clicking it, and I can copy CO. Make sure you grab a good point to a base point to copy from. So I'm going to grab it from that lower corner and I'm just going to bring it up. And you can do this a lot of the time. After you create a feature, um, you can just copy it to the new spot and then it just saves you from having to measure it and do it again. All right, so now we're in the, you know, we're in this section here. We've got some more complex features, but we also have very well defined um, sections at the front here that we have measurements for. So I'm going to do those next.
That section, we know that these are 20 tall, and then from the top view, we can see that they're also 17 wide. So they're 20 tall and 17 wide. I can just draw those right away. So I know the 20 tall goes up to there. I already measured that. So I have 17 wide, and then straight down to the bottom of the object should be 20 again. Okay, and then I will. This line here at the bottom, this uh, cutout section, means that this line can't continue all the way through that gapped area. So I actually have to go back to the other side or to the back of the object and do the same thing there. So I'm going to take this, bring it down 17 on that 30 degree angle, then down to the object line base, and I think I might have forgotten to draw that little chunk right there. And every once in a while I turn off my con lines and see how's it looking. Okay, it looks good. The difficult part, the ramped portion. This is where we have to do a little bit of finagling to figure out exactly where all of these pieces are because it doesn't give me, doesn't tell me what the height is um, for this gap and it doesn't tell me how far out this uh, particular piece comes into the wrapped portion. So I've got to do a little bit of, uh, of relatively simple geometry to figure this out. What it does tell me is for the bottom portion of this ramp here, it goes into the object 20 and that's really going to help me out here. Because I know where the ramp is essentially, I just need to know where I, uh, I need to know how far back it goes. Here's how I'm going to do that. And you know, sometimes you have to be a bit creative with this. I know that every line on this ramped feature, if I was just to treat this as like a piece of paper or a piece of wood and I laid it down on top of this ramped section, every line on that or every, for every place on that piece of paper or the board, all of these lines are going to be parallel. They're all on the same plane. So if I take that line and I just copy it to a couple of different places, it gives me some guides as to where that gap is going to be and what it's going to look like. And the same thing is true for the base of the object. If you think about the entire base as just a, you know, a piece of plywood that this whole thing is sitting on, all of these 30 degree lines are also going to uh, be parallel all the way across your object. So if I go to the bottom of the object, and I copy that line and I put it here. Okay, that represents the ground. So this line represents where this object meets the ground. And it's going to give me a bit of a guide that's going to help me to create this front slope. Okay, now you could leave those as object lines for now or you can make them con lines. It doesn't really matter. Typically I just leave them as object lines and then trim what I need to later. So what I'm going to try and figure out here is what does this gap look like based on this is the front of the object and I know I need to go back 20 units. Okay. Well, what I would do there is I would take a different con line and just the line tool. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here and I'm going to go back 20 units because I know this is on the ground. So I know this is going from the front of the object to the back. And it tells me that that gap is 20 in length. Well, that's great. Now all I need to do is I need to go up until it hits the ramp. Okay. Because I started here, I know that this line right there is sort of the end of the gap. All vertical lines are vertical. So if I'm going straight up, I'm going straight up, that's fine. Now I don't have a measurement for this. All I had was the measurement 20 in. So I've already done the 20 in. So that means wherever this hits that line, that's where that gap ends. So right there is where the gap ends. And as soon as you have that, then you're, then you're, you know, you're laughing because all you have to do is go back to your regular line tool. And then you could draw a line that goes from here at a I gotta think about this for a second here. Not a 30 degree, but yeah, a 30 degree, sorry. So I need a line that goes from there, 30 degrees to where it will hit the other end of the gap, right there, or the other end of the ramp, sorry. So that's where it hits the ramp. Now you can see this line because it becomes solid material again. So I'm just gonna put that line in there. I don't need that blue con line anymore, so I might as well just hide it. And we can see that the gap goes until right there. So anything after that is part of the object material. So I should be trimming lines at this point just to avoid confusion. So the rest of that line is useless. And any part after it hits this inside portion is also useless. So I've got a gap that goes in 20 up to where it hits the ramp and then it's part of the regular object here. And then also because 
this is you know solid material, you're going to see a line here from where it hits the ground. And then there's nothing in this area. That's just a gap. But there is definitely going to be that line there. And it might join up with this one. That's not necessarily a rule. It's just coincidence. So just make sure it goes down. Your line goes down at 30 degrees. And if it happens to hit that line or that corner perfectly, it does. And it is. So you just line it up like that. Turn off pecan lines. And let's see what we got here. Okay, so this is looking really good. That gap's there. I know it hits solid material, whatever it is there. And then everything from here upward is on that um, is on that plane surface. What that also means is that now I can trim these lines because I was just using them as guides as to they have to be on the same angle as these ones. Okay, every everything on this ramp has to have that exact same angle, which means these lines are all parallel. So I was just using them to help find where that corner and that corner is. Now that I've found those, I should just trim them for, uh, to reduce complexity. So now we're basically saying that I've got a, a piece of, uh, let's say, plywood cut out like this, and I've laid it on top at the proper angle. Now what I don't know is this part right here, how far out does it cut and what does that feature look like? But I can find that feature easily enough. So this front part here was maybe a bit challenging, but we got it done. Now we got to figure out this little part at the top to make sure that the ramp piece is correct. Now, do we have a measurement for that? No, we don't. Okay, no, we don't have a measurement for that. But um, I can redraw, okay, I can use the same principle that I use using these lines to show where the ramp would be. What I need to do is because this ramp meets this little this little uh, gap section, okay, it runs out and eventually just runs into the ramp, right? And we can see it on the hidden line, but we don't have the measurement. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fake this hidden line here and just draw it too far. And then I'm going to use that line to tell me where that gap would be. So I'm going to use a construction line again. Maybe I'll use this blue color. It shouldn't get in my way because, because I'm going to be up here now. And I'm going to draw a couple of guidelines that are going to help me. So this is the bottom of that, of that slot on the top. Now, I'm just going to make sure that it's at 30 degrees, same angle as that, and I'm going to draw what I think is too far. Okay, I know it hits the ramp, this ramped portion somewhere, but I'm not sure exactly where. And then I need to do the same thing over here. I actually deleted that little chunk to try to clarify things, but it looks like I'm going to have to draw it back again because I forgot about this section. Uh, that one goes down 11, okay, which, and then it'll be at a 60 degree angle or sorry, 30 degree angle, and I'll just draw that further than I think I need to. It looks a little weird, it's just because these two blue lines are of different lengths, but both of them represent the bottom of this slot. So that gets us halfway there. The other thing that we need to do is, um, oh, I made a little mistake and, I, and I, need to, I need to correct it. You see where I drew this line right here? It is, nope, I didn't make a mistake. In fact, it's the bottom of the gap. So those two lines represent the bottom of the gap. And the way I find out where the, the ramp hits this top part, so basically where this slot hits the ramp, is I'm going to use the same idea I used when getting the front intersection points there to tell you where that cutout was. And that is the principle that these lines, anything on this ramped plane, will be parallel with these lines. So you basically can just grab these lines again and copy them and put them in the new place that's going to help you, which is there and there. Because that those two points, if you think about it, are on the top of the ramp. Okay, So if those two points are on the top of the ramp, wherever that ramp crosses the bottom part, that's where the slot goes to. So if I draw in, maybe it'll become a little bit more clear once I actually connect those two lines. So if I connect that, wrong spot connected the wrong spot. So if I connect this with this, that now gives me the entire ramped section. And because this ramp hits that little slot, that means that these lines that I've drawn here can actually be object lines. You just can't draw them any further out than where it hits the slanted part or the ramped part. So if I draw this back, that shows me that section. And this one, you can tell because it's the same as the blue line. It's all going to be hidden because it's all going to be behind this 
raised portion. So I don't need to bother with that one. I'll just turn that construction line off because it's no longer helpful. So I've got my entire object drawn here. I've just got a couple lines that I've got to delete. Um, let's see, this ramped portion goes there and then you won't be able to see anything after where it hits here. This, the extensions of these lines down to the front of the object, remember we were just using those to figure out this point and this point. I could have used construction lines, um, but I just used object lines because I, I was reasonably confident that I would know exactly where to trim after I found that point. So anything after that point is a line that you're not gonna see on the ramp. For instance, if you look at it right here from the top view, you don't see that line, right? It's just part of a flat surface that's got that H shape, shape cut out of it that makes up the ramp. So I, I can trim both of those lines, okay? And now I look at my object and I believe that I've got everything drawn appropriately. Lines that are hidden, okay, so like these lines here that we deleted before, those are hidden, you're not seeing them, you're not seeing the bottom of this slot over here because this material is getting in the way. What you can see is, you can see this line right here because that's where it transitions into the ramp. So if you're looking at this object in real life, you would see that and the same thing on the other side. And at this point, it's just a matter of checking some dimensions, excuse me, with your line tool or your annotation tool or whatnot, and make sure all your line lengths are appropriate because they should be true to life. So I, I'm just gonna take my line tool and go here. I know that's supposed to be 54, right? So just double checking, is that 54? Is that 130? That's great. I know it's supposed to go up 20 here. Does it go up 20? Yep, yeah, it does. I know that this slot is 36 wide. I don't know if it tells me that on the drawing, but doing simple math, yep, yeah, it does right there, 36, and those ones should be 12. So I'm just using my line tool. I'm, I'm just not clicking the second time to actually draw the line. I'm just looking at what it gives me for the length. So that's 12. Um, that all looks really good, and I know that gap from top to bottom is 11, I've already measured that. So everything looks really good, everything uh, conforms to the dimensions and to the general look of the object. At that point, you're done. And it looks like, luckily enough, my title block looks to be just the right size, so I'm just gonna move this thing and try to maybe center it a bit more. And I'm just kinda eyeballing it here. I'm not gonna screw on with that. Oop. Snapped something, didn't want that to happen, but. Simple enough fix, just go grab it again. M for move, grab a base point to move it from, and then just try to do your best to put it in the middle. Okay, that looks pretty good to me, so that's it. And once you get the hang of it, you can do these actually really quickly. So I would just make sure I save my object, okay, make sure my title block's all correct, and then I can go and, uh, and submit the drawing. So that should give you enough information to draw objects that have you know, 90 degree angles in the orthographic view, that have some, some um, uh, ramped areas or angles, things like that. If you have enough information in the orthographic to draw these, just try to do it one piece at a time inside your bounding box. One more thing I should check, does it all fit inside my bounding box? Did I accidentally delete the bounding box? Oh, it's yellow, that's not good. Don't forget I moved my object, so before I moved it, I, uh, it, would, it would have fit into all of these, and I can just demonstrate that quickly. Being delicate here, so I'm not accidentally grabbing my white lines. Could have locked them, probably would have been easier, but. Okay, so I'm just gonna move my bounding box now. Go in the back corner match it up in the back corner here and everything should fit perfectly inside the box. You see every line is inside the box and all the, you know, the front of the object, height, steps, everything conforms to the box, but yet the actual object is inside the box and cut out. So as soon as I turn off my con lines, you get the actual version. All right, if you have any questions, let me know. In our next lesson, we're gonna move on to, um, you know, doing things like fillets and circular objects, which takes a bit more um, a technique.